Well, that was Mums to Downtown Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, August 13th, 2021, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Jamie Spears, the father of singer Britney Spears, filed Thursday to step down as a conservator of his daughter's estate. The decision announced in Los Angeles Superior Court comes after 13 years and court hearings in the past two months in which the 39-year-old singer has accused her father of conservator abuse, including using her estate and finances for his own benefit and exerting his status as conservator to control her career and personal life. Jamie Spears' lawyer, Vivian Thoreen, wrote in the court document that there are, quote, no actual grounds for suspending or removing him from the conservatorship, adding, it is highly debatable whether a change in conservator at this time would be in Ms. In Ms. Spears' best interest. She also added, nevertheless, even as Mr. Spears is the unremitting target of unjustified attacks, he does not believe that a public battle with his daughter over his continuing services as her conservator would be in her best interest. So even though he must contest this unjustified petition for his removal, Mr. Spears intends to work with the court and his daughter's new attorney to prepare for an orderly transition to a new conservator. The singer's father has been the conservator of her $60 million estate since 2008, after she was placed on psychiatric hold. Spears' attorney, Matthew Rosengart, said her legal team was, quote, pleased that her father had conceded he must be removed as a conservator of his daughter's estate. Uh, Rosengart said in a statement to CNN, it's a vindication for Brittany. We are disappointed, however, by their ongoing shameful and reprehensive attacks on Ms. Spears and others. We look forward to continuing our vigorous investigation into the conduct of Mr. Spears and others over the past 13 years while he re aped um, millions of dollars from his daughter's estate, and I look forward to taking Ms. Mr. Spears' sworn disposition in the near future. Spears, who had previously not been permitted to select her own attorney, hired Rosengart last month and filed a petition to remove her father as a conservator of her estate and replace him with Jason Rubin. Rosengart, in a filing, said that Jamie Spears has profited handsomely from being his daughter's conservator, writing that he took a 1.5% cut of the gross revenues and merchandise earnings on the singer's Las Vegas residency, totaling at least $2.1 million, as well as a 2.95% commission on her femme fatale tour in 2011, totaling approximately $500,000. In a June 23rd hearing, Spears said she has faced abuse at the hands of her family and therapists, such as being forced to go on tour and perform in a Las Vegas residency, placed on lithium against her will, and prevented from removing an intrauterine device so she can have another child. She also said she was extremely scared of her father and that the conservatorship, quote, has allowed my dad to ruin my life. Shudder has acquired the period horror feature The Last Thing Mary Saw from writer, director, Eduardo Villetti. The horror streaming service from AMC Networks acquired the film before its world premiere Sunday at the 25th Annual Fantasia International Film Festival in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. Shudder will release The Last Thing Mary Saw in the U.S., U.K., Ireland, Australia, New Zealand in early 2022. The project will have its U.K. premiere on August 28th at Fright Fest in London. Stephanie Scott stars as Mary, who is being interrogated after her grandma about her grandmother's death. The film takes place in South Holt, New York in 1843 and will jump back in time. Mary was raised in a religious household and found love with the maid Eleanor, portrayed by Isabel Furman. Mary's family sees the relationship as an abomination that needs to be destroyed. The couple try to continue seeing each other in secret, with things getting more complicated by the arrival of an, an enigmatic stranger played by Roy Culkin and the revelation of greater forces at work. Uh, Villa Letty said in a statement, it is such an honor to join Shudder's incredible slate of films. For years, they have been raising the bar for thought-provoking genre storytelling, and I'm thrilled to partner with them in releasing The Last Thing Mary Saw. 
The Home Alone reboot starring Ellie Kempler and Rob Delaney is coming to Disney Plus in November. The streaming service said in a press release Thursday that the new holiday film titled Home Sweet Home Alone will premiere November 12th. Home Sweet Home Alone is a reboot of the 1990 Home Alone and the sixth movie in the Home Alone franchise. Macaulay Culkin starred as Kevin McAllister in the first two films. Mickey Day and Streeter Seidel wrote the script for the new movie with Dan Mazur as director and Jeremiah Samuels as executive producer. Archie Yates, Ali McKee, Peter Holmes, uh, Pete Holmes, and Kenan Thompson uh, and, and Pete Holmes also star. Home Sweet Home Alone follows Max Mercer, played by Yates, a uh, mischievous and resourceful young boy who is left behind while his family is in Japan for the holidays. When a married couple attempt to retrieve their priceless heirloom, sets their sights on the, on the Mercer family home, it's up to Max to protect it from the trespassers. The official description reads, hilarious hijinks of epic proportions and sewer. But despite the absolute chaos, Max comes to the realization that there is really no place like home sweet home. St. Vincent is the subject of a fictional music documentary that is running into creative issues in the new trailer for the upcoming film, The Nowhere In. St. Vincent blurs the lines between reality and fiction in the clip released on Thursday as she hires her best friend, Carrie Brownstein, to direct the music documentary so she can show fans who she really is. The pair run into creative issues and are unsure how to present St. Vincent's life on film, leading to debates. Brownstein says, you're nerdy and normal in real life, but the disparity between that and who you are on stage is jarring. The real life recording artist says, I can be St. Vincent all the time so that I can be a little bit more interesting. Nowhere In from first time filmmaker Bill Benz is coming to theaters and video on demand service on September 17th. Dakota Johnson also stars in the project, which is described as a metafictional um, account. St. Vincent, whose real name is Annie Clark, co wrote the script with Brownstein. St. Vincent also provides the music. Netflix is giving a glimpse of the new film, The Wonder. The streaming service shared a first look photo for the psychological thriller Thursday featuring Florence Pugh as English nurse Lib Wright. The Wonder is based on Emma Donahue's novel of the same name. Production on the film is underway in Ireland. The new movie is set in the Irish Midlands of 1862 and inspired by the 19th century phenomenon of fasting girls. It follows Anna O'Donnell, an 11-year-old girl who stops eating but remains miraculously alive and well, and Liv, a nurse who is brought to Anna's village to observe. Sebastian Lelio uh, directed The Wonder, which co-stars Tom Burke, Naomi Algar, Elaine Cassidy, Keila Lore Cassidy, Toby Jones, Clearing Hines, Dermot Crowley, Brian F. O'Brien, and David Wilmot. The Leo said in a statement, bringing the powerful novel The Wonder by Emma Donahue to the screen not only offers me the chance to portray the collision between reason and faith, individual and community, obedience and rebellion, but also to explore my own interpretation of what a period film can be. I couldn't be more thrilled that the animatic and courageous Florence Pugh will play our fierce female lead. Dono uh, also wrote the novel Room, which was adapted as a 2015 film starring Brie Larson and Jacob Tremblay. The Wonder is the first commission from Fiona Lamptey in the United Kingdom for Netflix UK film Slate. The movie will premiere in 2022. Pew is known for the films Midsummer, Little Women, and Black Widow. Finch, a sci-fi film starring double Oscar winner Tom Hanks and Get Out alum Caleb Landry Jones is set to debut on Apple TV Plus on November 5th. Miguel Spasichink uh, directed the post-apocalyptic adventure from an original screenplay by Greg Luck and Ivor Powell. Robert Zemeckis is a producer on the project. The story follows a teacher robotics engineer, Hanks, as he tries to ensure the safety of his dog, Goodyear, after he dies. The synopsis reads, he creates a robot played by Jones to watch over Goodyear when he no longer can. As the trail embarks on a perilous journey into a desolated American West, Finch strives to show his creation, whose name himself is Jeff, the joy and wonder of what it means to be alive. The road trip is paved with both challenges and humors, as it is as difficult for Finch to go Jeff and Goodyear to get along as it is for him to manage the dangers of the new world. Hanks' movie Greyhound also premiered via the streaming service last year. And Zemeckis previously collaborated on 
Forrest Gump, Castaway, and The Polar Express. Many high-profile films have moved to streaming services on pay-per-view platforms due to the coronavirus pandemic to allow people the choice to view movies at home rather in cinemas. Major League Baseball's Field Dreams game will return in 2022 with the potential for games beyond that on the Dyersville, Iowa farm, Major League Baseball Commissioner Rob Manfred announced. Manfred spoke about future games on the site of the 1989 Field Dreams movie. Thursday, before the Chicago White Sox beat the New York Yankees 9-8 in the inaugural affair. Manfred told reporters the reception this, uh, that this event has received has been so positive that we will be back. It's pretty clear we're going to be back next year, and we'll have to talk about it after that. But it has been so successful that it's hard not to take the opportunity to do it again. White Sox shortstop Tim Anderson won Thursday's game with a walk-off homer in the bottom of the ninth inning. Yankee Sluggers Aaron Judge, uh, Giancarlo Staten, and Brett Gardner also hit blasts into the corner field beyond the outfield wall. Uh, Jose Abreu, Eloy Jimenez, and Sebi Zavala homered for the White Sox. Field Dreams actor Kevin Costner and Dara Brown were among the 7,832 fans in attendance. On Wednesday, ticket prices on the secondary market ranged from $999 to more than $4,000. A lottery was held for face value tickets from July 16th to the 23rd. Only Iowa residents were eligible. The documentary, Introducing Selma Blair, is scheduled to be released in theaters and online this October. Directed by Rachel Fleet, the film is about the cruel intentions in Hellboy actress's career and health issues. It will be released in selected theaters on October 15th and on Disney Plus on October 21st. The streaming service described the documentary in a press release Thursday as a, quote, deeply intimate and powerful feature about one of women's journey of personal acceptance and resilience, which follows the singular actress as she reckons with the next chapter of her life after being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Blair announced nearly three years ago that she was being treated for MS. Uh, Blair said at the time as she worked on the Netflix series Another Life, I'm a disabled, I fall sometimes, I drop things, my memory is foggy. And my left side is asking for directions from a broken GPS, but we are doing it, and I laugh, and I don't know exactly what I will do precisely, but I will do my best. Dead to Me actress Christina Applegate disclosed this week that she, too, has been diagnosed with MS. FX has released the official trailer for Part 1 of American Horror Story Season 10 on Friday. Red Tide is the first part of the season's American Horror Story double feature. Red Tide shows an author played by Finn Wittrock move with his family to a beach house in Providence Town to work on his writing. His wife, played by Lily Rabe, is pregnant and they already have a daughter, played by Ryan Kier Armstrong. FX previously released a teaser for American Horror Story double feature showing an alien and vampire on a beach. The full trailer established a beachside location and offers some glimpse at the vampire. The author turns to some locals played by Francis Conroy and Evan Peters for inspiration to help combat his writer's block. Meanwhile, Leslie Grossman tells Macaulay Culkin something weird is going on here and I want to know what it is. Future Clips shows the author obsessively typing, Angelica Ross doing lab work, and a bloody body dangling over a table. Sarah Paulson and Billy Lord also star in Red Tide. Part 2 of American Horror Story's double feature is called Death Valley. Season 10 of American Horror Story premieres on August 25th at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on FX. Episodes stream on Hulu the next day. Jeopardy! champion Matt Amodio has become the third highest earner in the show's history after winning his 17th ga game in a row. Amadio has earned $547,600 in total, putting him behind fellow champions James Holzhauer at $2,462,216 and Kent Jennings at $2,520,700. He reached third place after winning $42,400 on Thursday. Amadio is a fifth-year uh, computer science Ph.D. student at Yale University shook his head in disbelief, and smiled as guest host Joe Buck told him about reaching third place. Amodio is also in fifth place for most consecutive wins and will be competing again on Friday starting at 
12.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on ABC. He said in a statement, the show has had so many brilliant people on it. I'm honored to be thought of as even close to them. Um, with Dio in a recent interview with Vulture says that he had to study pop culture as it is his biggest weakness and is a fan of the show and Jennings. Um, with Dio remarked on how it felt being recognized by Jennings on Twitter. He said, I can't believe uh, I can't believe it in terms of top moment of my life. I assume getting my PhD would be a good one. When I get married, that would be a good one. I'm not sure they're going to unseat Ken Jennings recognizing me. That's really number one in my book. Mike Richards, the executive producer of Jeopardy, was recently named the new host of the long-running game show. Mylon Bilak of Big Band Theory fame will be hosting Jeopardy's primetime special, including the Jeopardy National College Championship and a potential spin-off series. Original host Alex Trebek died at the age of 80 in November from pancreatic cancer. Sleepy Hollow and Nikita writer Albert Kim has announced he is working on a live-action Netflix series based on the Nickelodeon anime show Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, Kim said in the statement Thursday, my first thought was, why? What is there I could do or say with the story that wasn't done or said in the original? Um, Attila has only grown in popularity and acclaims over the last decade and a half, which is a testament to how complete and resonant a narrative experience it had been. So if it ain't broke, why fix it? But he also added, but the more I thought about it, the more intrigued I became. VFX uh, technology has advanced to the point where a live action version cannot only faithfully translate what had been done in animation. It can bring a rich new visual dimension to a fantastic world. We'll be able to see bending in a real and versatile way we've never seen before. The original show, which followed people who can magically manipulate the four elements of fire, water, air, and earth, initially ran on Nickelodeon from 2005 to 2008. The franchise has inspired comic book and novels, as well as the 2010 live-action movie. Leading in the cast of the live-action streaming project will be Gordon Comier as Aang, uh, Kalatawino as Katara, Ian Owsley as Soka, and Dallas Lee as Zuko. Rapper, singer, songwriter, and producer T-Pain has signed on to serve as a judge for TBS's Go Big Show for Season 2. T-Pain tweeted Thursday, I've got some big news. I'm, going, I'm joining at Go Big Show TBS as a judge for Season 2. I can't wait to see all of the insane acts this season. Who's ready to watch? The panel also includes Rosario Dawson, Jennifer Nettles, and Cody Rhodes. Burt Kreischer is the host of the 10-episode hour-long series. A press release says, Go Big Show showcases supersized talents on a scale never before seen on television. The debut season features monster trucks, alligator trainers, stunt archery, and other radical feats. The program celebrates daring acts alongside personal behind-the-scenes stories from the challengers as they battle head-to-head -to, -head to impress the judges and advance towards the finale ultimate $100,000 prize. Netflix surprised Grace and Frankie fans on Friday by releasing four episodes from the show's upcoming seventh and final season early. Series stars Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin announced the arrival of the early episodes in a video addressed to fans. Tomlin said in the clip, which was uploaded uh, uh, on the official Netflix Twitter account, we've missed you, but most importantly, you've missed us. Fonda says, don't worry, there's plenty more to come. We just wanted to give you something special until we finish the rest of the season. The rest of season seven will come to Netflix in 2022. Grace and Frankie follow Fonda and Tomlin as two women who bond after their husbands announce that they're in love with each other and want to be together. Co-stars include Martin Sheen and Sam Waterston. The series premiered in 2015. Amazon Studios announced Thursday that it will film season two of its Lord of the Rings series in the UK Amazon expects to resume production in 2022. Season 1 of The Lord of the Rings filmed in New Zealand, where Peter Jackson filmed The Lord of the Rings and Hobbit films. Season 1 wrapped on August 3rd. Um, after wrapping Season 1, Amazon set a premiere date for September 2nd, 2022, after which episodes will air weekly. The first image from production shows a vista of Middle Earth and a distant figure. Amazon added that post-production on Season 1 will continue in New Zealand. Amazon expects post-production to last through June 2022 while production begins in the UK concurrently. The announcement affirms Amazon's commitment to invest in studio space in the UK. 
Lord of the Rings series is set to in the Second Age, thousands of years prior to the J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings story, J.B. Payne, and Patrick McTay, McKay are the showrunners. HBO Max announced the return date for Gossip Girl on Thursday, part two of the first season will premiere in November. The second half of the season will include six episodes. Gossip Girl premieres on July 8th on HBO Max. Joshua Safran, a writer for the original Gossip Girl, developed a new series for HBO Max. The original, created by Josh Schwartz and Stephanie Savage, aired from 2007 to 2012 on The CW. Gossip Girl follows the drama of teenagers at a boarding school chronicled by an anonymous blogger who calls herself Gossip Girl. In the HBO Max series, Gossip Girl resurfaced on social media nine years after the website went dark. Kristen Bell reprises her role as the voice of Gossip Girl. The July 8th launch was HBO Max's best original series launch of 2021, according to the HBO Max press release. The streaming service launched on May 27, 2020. Robert Plant and Alison Krauss are releasing a new album together. Plant, a uh, singer-songwriter known for his role with Led Zeppelin and Krauss, a country music singer, will release the album Raise the Roof in November. Raise the Roof is a follow-up to Plant and Krauss' 2007 album Ra Rising Sand, which won six Grammy Awards, including Record of the Year and Album of the Year. The new album will feature several covers of less familiar songs by well-known names, including Merle Hager, The Everly Brothers, and Alan Toussaint. Plan and Krauss released the first single from the album, a cover of Randy Weeks' song, Can't Let Go, on Thursday. Plant said on Twitter, finally the doors are open, and after 14 years, here's a sequel to Raising Sand, full of interesting curves and great musicality in the, ray, in the company of great musicians. We raised the roof. T-Bone Burnett produced the album, which features guitarist Mark Ribolt, David Hildago, Bill Frazel, and Buddy Miller, bassists Dennis Crouch and Victor Krauss, pedal steel guitarist Russ Powell and drummer Jay Bella Rose. Krauss said in a statement, we wanted him to move. We brought other people in, other personalities within the band, and coming back together again in the studio brought a new intimacy to the harmonies. Plan added, you hear something and you go, man, listen to li listen to that song. We go to sing that. It's a vacation, really, the perfect place to go that you least expect to find. Plant and Krauss will release Raise the Roof on November 19th. The pair will support the album with the tour in 2022. Music legend Tony Bennett, who is 95 and battling Alzheimer's disease, has canceled his scheduled concerts for this fall. Bennett was expected to go back on the road next month to perform six years that was postponed this past year because of the coronavirus pandemic, but he no longer plans to do so. His son Danny told Variety Thursday there won't be any additional concerts. Uh, he said, this was a hard decision for us to make, as he is a capable performer. This is, however, doctor's orders. He'll be doing other things, but not those upcoming shows. It's not the singing aspect, but rather the traveling. Look, he gets tired. The decision is being made that doing concerts now is just too much for him. We don't want him to fall on stage, for instance. Something as simple as that. The concerts were to take place in Staten Island, Maryland, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, Oklahoma, and Canada. Bennett headlined with Lady Gaga, a two-show residency at Radio City Music Hall on August 3rd and 5th in honor of his milestone birthday, which was August 3rd. Called One Last Time, an evening with Tony Bennett and Lady Gaga, the event was billed as Bennett's final New York City public performances. Love for Sale, Bennett and Gaga's second album of debuts is set to go on sale on August 1st. They released a music video last Friday of their rendition of I Can't Get a Kick Out of You a song from the Broadway musical Anything Goes. Bennett and Gaga previously collaborated on the album Cheek to Cheek in 2014. Elton John and Dua Lipa are back with new music. John and Lipa released a single and music video for their song Cold Hard, Noir Remix. Cold Hard is a mashup club track remixed by the Australian producer group Noir. Uh, John performs lyrics from his 1989 single Sacrifice, while Lipa sings lines from John's song Rocket Man. The Cold Heart video is an animated video that shows John and Lipa visit a colorful world inhabited by cat people. John wrote on Instagram, this track is a culmination of a beautiful friendship with you, Dua, and I'm so happy we can now share it. I hope you all love it. Lipa said on her own account, Elton, you are my friend and hero, and I never thought I'd be able to ever say that in a sentence. Thank you for all your love and support. 
uh, grateful to make music with you in this lifetime. Uh, Cold Heart is John's third single of, his, of the year following Chosen Family with Rina Sayayama and It's a Sin with Years of Years. He announced the final dates of his Farewell Yellow Brick Road tour in June. Lipa released her second studio album, Future Nostalgia, in March 2020 and a deluxe edition, Future Nostalgia, the Moonlight Edition, in February. The Killers are back with new music. The rock band released its seventh studio album, Pressure Machine, in a music video for the song Quiet Town on Friday. The Quiet Town video is an animated video that takes place in Niffy, Utah, a small southwestern town where the Killers frontman Brandon Flowers lived from age 10 to 16. Pressure Machine features 10 other songs, including Runaway Horses, featuring Phoebe Bridgers. Flowers previously said Pressure Machine emerged from the COVID-19 pandemic after, quote, everything came to this grinding halt. Flowers says, and it was the first time in a long time for me that I was faced with silence. And out of that silence, that record began to bloom, full of songs that would have otherwise been too quiet and drowned out by the noise of the typical killer's record. Pressure Machine was inspired by Naffy. Uh, drummer Ronnie Vanucci Jr. said, We were discussing Brandon moving to Naffy as a kid and being stuck in the middle of nowhere. And during COVID-19, it started to feel like we were in the middle of nowhere. Flowers added, I discovered this grief that I hadn't dealt with. Many memories of my, my time in Naffy are tender, but the ones tied to fear or great sadness were emotionally charged. I've got more understanding now than when we started the band, and hopefully I was able to do justice to these stories. And these lives in this little town that I grew up in. The Killers will promote Pressure Machine with a new North American tour that begins August 19th in Vancouver, British Columbia. And finally, here are the top 10 songs on the Billboard Hot 100 single charts for the week of August 14th. Number 10, The Weeknd and Ariana Grande with Save Your Tears. Number 9, Olivia Rodrigo with Deja Vu. Uh, number 8, Not Little Nas X with Montero, Call Me By Your Name. Number seven, Little Nas X and Jack Harlow with Industry Baby. Number six, Doja Cat featuring SZA with Kiss Me More. Number five, Ed Sheeran with Bad Habits. Number four, BTS with Butter. Number three, Dua Lipa featuring The Baby with Levitating. Number two, Olivia Rodrigo with Good For You. And the number one song on the Billboard Hot 100 single charts for the week of August 14th, The Kid, Leroy, and Justin Bieber with Stay. And that is your entertainment report for Friday, August 13th, 2021. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Facebook.com slash The Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for The Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Everyone have a great weekend. Good night and God bless you all.